Marcus has a balance of $1,300 on his credit card. The credit card has an annual interest rate of 21% compounded monthly, which is 1.75% each month. Marcus uses his credit card for various expenses throughout the month and at the end of each month makes a $325 payment. Use this information to complete the table below, round to the nearest cent as needed. So the ending balance after month one is $1,300 which becomes the beginning balance or prior balance for month two. And because Marcus did not pay off this balance, he is charged 1.75% interest on $1,300. And therefore we need to find 1.75% of $1,300. To do this, we convert the percent to a decimal and multiply. 1.75% as a decimal is 0 0.0175 then we have times 1,300, which gives us the interest of $22.75 for month two, which goes in this cell here. The next column gives us the additional charges, which are the additional charges that Marcus makes on the credit card, which increases the balance. And then in this column here, we have the payment of $325. To find the ending balance at the end of month two, we take the prior balance, we add the interest, we add the additional charges, and then we subtract the monthly payment. So the ending balance for month two will be $1,300 plus the interest of $22.75 plus the additional charges of $125 and then minus the monthly payment of $325. And therefore the balance at the end of month two is $1,122.75. Which goes in this cell here. Which also becomes the prior balance at the beginning of month three. And now we repeat the process. To find the interest for month three, we need to find 1.75% of the balance of $1,122.75. So again, we convert to a decimal and multiply. We are told to round to the nearest cent, and because we have an eight in the third decimal place, you round up, to $19.65, which goes in this cell here. And now we can find the balance at the end of month three. We take the starting balance of $1,122.75. We add the interest of $19.65. We add the additional charges so we have plus $484, and then we subtract the monthly payment made of $325. The balance at the end of month three is $1,301.40. Which we place in this cell here. So the balance at the end of month three becomes the beginning balance for month four. Notice in this row they do give us the interest of $22.77, but let's go ahead and check that this amount is 1.75% of the prior balance shown here, which should be 1.75% of 1,301 point four zero. And again, this product should be $22.77, which the nearest cent is $22.77. Let's also check the balance at the end of month four by taking the prior balance of 1,301.4, or $1,301.40, add the interest of $22.77, add the additional purchases or charges of $330, and 
and then subtracting the monthly payment of $325. which does come out to $1,329.17, which does match the given information. The ending balance of month four, notice becomes the prior balance for month five, and now we need to find the interest on this prior balance, which again is 1.75% of $1,329.17. Convert to a decimal and multiply. Notice here, because we have a zero in the third decimal place, we round down to $23.26. And now we can find the balance at the end of month five by taking the prior balance or beginning balance of $1,329.17, adding the interest of $23.26, adding the additional charges of $431, and subtracting the monthly payment of $325, which gives an ending balance of $1,458.43. I hope you found this helpful.